The next concepts of mens rea that we're going to look at together are recklessness and criminal negligence. And these are actually different from each other, uh, but really the logic is pretty close to being the same. So you could really just think of them as the same thing. Uh, and in fact, in the United States, they tend to make recklessness and willful blindness the same thing, but really it, it makes more sense to me the way we do it in Canada, which is that recklessness is uh, distinct from willful blindness. Recklessness in courts is like a notch down from willfulness. It's not that you wanted the thing to happen, uh, but you acted in a way that was uh, that in, that put people at risk. So you voluntarily put people at risk, even if you didn't necessarily specifically intend for the things to happen. You did actions that definitely you knew were putting people at risk, uh, and that's what we're punishing here. So it doesn't make you guilty of a crime where the mens rea would require an actual desire. Like there is no such thing as reckless murder, right? Um, but if you have knowledge of the danger of risk and then you decide you have the desire to go through with it, that's what recklessness is. It's We're still talking about knowledge and desire like we saw with willfulness, knowledge of what's happening and a desire to go through with it. But the knowledge of what's happening me means that you know not necessarily that... You, what's going to happen, but what might happen if you do what you're going to do. So the only way this is really going to become clear is with an example. This is the case of uh, the Crown versus D'Souza. This went to the Supreme Court of Canada. And the story here was that this guy, D'Souza, was charged with unlawfully causing bodily harm. And so the court was trying to figure out, based on the law, what was the level of mens rea that was required. And they decided in this case it would be recklessness. Because what happened was this guy was at a party, and uh, you know, as people do at parties, because uh, sometimes people act like complete idiots, this guy D'Souza threw a glass bottle against a wall, which he thought was hilarious, and it smashed, and a shard of the bottle bounced off the wall and cut the arm of the victim, which can be quite serious. To, you know, you got a lot of veins and arteries in your arm there. So uh, this woman was quite severely injured. She survived. She was okay. Uh, but then the question became, okay, well, this guy clearly acted like an absolute idiot. We want to punish him somehow. Uh, what is it that he's being punished for? And it wasn't that he necessarily wanted this to happen to the woman. It's not that he was specifically targeting her, but he put her at a risk and anyone else close to the smashing bottle at a risk. Uh, and so even if the consequences were somewhat unforeseen, uh, it's still the act of putting these people at risk and willingly doing so that they punished. And so the Supreme Court looked at this. They said, for crimes where uh, there, for crimes where uh, really it's a severe crime, it's not enough to just be reckless like this guy was. Again, they're saying this wouldn't be enough for murder, but this offense here, unlawfully causing bodily harm isn't such a an awful crime that it's unfair to convict this guy on the mere basis that he was acting very, very stupidly, that he willfully put people at risk. So again, recklessness is willfully putting people at risk. You wanted to do it, you knew they would be at risk, and you did it. Now, this is different from criminal negligence in uh, some ways. Like in criminal negligence, you don't necessarily know that specific people are going to be at risk. But uh, what you're doing is, like, if you remember negligence, when we talked about in the context of civil law, negligence is when you're not taking reasonable steps, right? You're not acting like the reasonable person. That causes a fault. Criminal negligence is when the way that you're behaving is so far from being reasonable that we're going to say, okay, this is a marked departure, not just a departure from the duty of care, not just far away from what's reasonable, but very far away from what's reasonable. It's a question of degree. And the idea is that it's so far away from what's reasonable that you had to actively have not cared about people around you. The way that you're acting is so dangerous to others around you that we're going to punish it criminally. There's no subjective knowledge. You don't need to show that, okay, this person knew that this was going to happen. They could foresee this was going to happen. We just have to show this was really, really, really stupid and that we're going to punish them for it. A uh, big example of where this pops up, if you look in the criminal code, there's the crime of criminal negligence causing death, which is most frequently uh, applied to people who were drunk drivers who ended up killing other people. And the idea is, look, you were so drunk and you got behind the wheel of the car, maybe you didn't want anyone to die, but it was so stupid for you to do what you did under those circumstances uh, that the fact that people died as a result uh, of the accident is not innocent. That's something that's criminal and you're going to be held criminally responsible for their deaths. Now, again, 
recklessness and criminal negligence may sound very similar because in a lot of ways they are uh, and really it's not like one is a is a much higher level and the other is far below it they're really close to being the same thing it's just they happen to pop up in different crimes so the analysis that a court will bring to them is slightly different but ultimately they're really pretty close